Hi, welcome back to you new lesson. In a previous lesson, I had shown you about the exception priority labels and how processor manage those priority. In this lesson, I am going to show you what happens to the link register and program counter when an exception occurs in our microcontroller. So moreover, when an exception occurs, the link register LR is set to a specific address based on the current program counter. So you can say the LR is stored with the content of the PC with plus minus some number. Okay. So and this number depends this number depends on 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 the uh, uh, on the type of the exception okay such as this this number k depends on the type of exception as you might know that a program counter pc is executing as the address number n sorry uh, if the instruction is being executed at the address number n then the program counter points to the next executable instruction that is residing at the n plus 4 and if i say you say to you that when an exception occurs the program counter plus some numbers or minus some numbers is stored into the link register so for example let's say if fiq instruction occurs then what will happen sorry if fiq exception occurs then what happens at the fiq exception let's say the processor is executing the address instruction which is residing at the address n and the program counter is pointing at the address of the n plus 4 so at the hardware architecture uh, is assigned okay in arm controller after servicing the interrupt service routine or the exception service handler then the processor has to come at this address again so what happened the processor directly can store this address but but what happened in in arm architecture when the data of program counter is stored into the link register relative to the program counter it automatically add plus 8 that's when the pc plus 8 will be stored into the link register so what happened so what happened when user has to come back here at this address then what user do generally user do lr minus 4 okay so in, in fact this would not be the pc plus 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 8 it would be the pc plus 4 actually the plus 8 means it will add plus 8 from the address where the processor is executing since the pc is already n plus 4 then it will become a pc plus 4 so again coming back to the same address that is the pc pointing then the link register has to store with the link register minus 4 that's the pc so this is what pointing here this is what it is pointing that so the return address from the fiq handler is lr minus 4 and from the data about handler it is lr minus 8 and from the swi and undefined instruction it is just lr that means in that case it automatically save the same address uh, without any addition that means in that case the k is zero right same address means the address where the program counter is pointing so what we can do we can understand this with an example okay let me show you this with an example 
so we can understand this with an example um i am going to take an example where a handler occurs uh, let's say any of this handler okay the fiq irq or the prefetch about handler any of these handler occurs so the, the scheme which i am going to show you that it applies any of these three handler so let's say here we have a, a label that is known as a handler and then here we have a handler code of course there will be a code to handle that exception and this is a handler code let's say few lines of handler code after that now once this handler is served okay our handler is managed then the processor has to return at the original location where the exception had occurred so the processor returned with the instruction subs that is the subtract pc r14 that is the link register and has 4 so if you have remember here our instruction set tutorials are the lessons if we write subs pc r14 and 4 in this case the pc will be loaded with r14 minus 4 okay and the r14 is ultimately the link register so it becomes the link register minus 4 the pc will be loaded here and if you might notice here is that there is s okay so this suffice s make sure that the cpsr automatically stored from spsr so in this case cpsr automatically restored from spsr you might have remember in my previous tutorials that when an exception occurs there is some procedure in which cpsr saved into the spsr let me show you here okay so the cpsr always saved into the spsr but once instruction is uh, once service is done uh, exception handling is done and it is serviced then it again come back to the normal position where the exception had occurred and that can we do with by loading the pc with the content of the link register now let's take the another example in another example i am going to show it in, in in another way so the another way to show this example is like this let's say once again we have here the handler and uh, the data is already i mean the position is already stored into the pc then at the very first instruction what we can do we can subtract the link register with 4 okay so in this case r14 will be r14 minus 4 and if you remember that now we do not need to do a subtraction here and now we can write handler code here let's say few line of code is there and then finally we can move r14 into program counter so it's it's same instruction if you say here but the number of instruction has been increased here in the, in the first case first example we were doing that into the single instruction but in this example we are doing it into two instruction okay and this yes make sure that the cpsr is restored from spsr and now the last example which i am going to show you that 
In this example, I'll show you in an innovative way how to store the data, link register, etc., on the stack pointer and then finally load from the stack pointer. So let's say again we have here the handler. Then of course we will do subtract R14, R14 with 4. In this case, R14 is subtracted by 4. Then in the next instruction, I am going to store the, if you see here, if you have remember the, our, our multiple store and the load instructions at tutorial, there I had described you that STM is a store multiple registers and FD shows that the addressing mode, that is the full descending mode. So if you don't remember that, please go through my, uh, the playlist of ARM programming tutorials. There I have described the multiple loads and store instruction set. So the STMFD, now we have STMFD. Once we have this STMFD, we can write here the the uh, the link uh, the program the stack pointer that is the R13. The address in the stack pointer is stored in R13. And then we are going to store the register set from R0, R1, R2, R3 and R14. Here the R14 is a program counter. And then finally handler code is there. Okay. And after that handler code we are going to load that with LDM that is the load multiple FD with the full descending addressing mode and from the same stack pointer address and the register in which we are going to store that R0, R1, R2, R3 and program counter here that's the PC and finally that that uh, sign is very important this sign makes sure that CPSR should be restored from SPSR so this is a kind of serving a purpose of suffix S in an instruction set which we had seen earlier so this is all about in this video in which we have looked about the link register and the program counter in exception mode. How the link register and the program counters changes and uh, behaves when an exception occurred. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to subscribe this channel so that you can get updates directly into your inbox. Bye bye. Have a nice day.